Hi, I'm making this video to answer this question here from this person that has not received any answer from over a month ago. It's the 26th of July at the start of making this video. Uh, it's a lab we do in class anyway, so I kind of need to make this video as, as well anyway, so it kills uh, a couple of birds with one stone. So I am doing the vitamin C content of lemon juice, uh, see how it's affected with temperature. I have no idea how to calculate the vitamin C content in the juice. I trade traded with iodine and a starch indicator, that's what we do. Um, doing this uh, heat thing, doing this heat thing, I hope you've done your research because that's done to death, so you need to make sure it's a little bit um, creative, you've got to put some sort of edge to it. And tell me the vitamin because you think I have a blue colour appears, so it looks like it's the same experiment. I don't have your numbers, but I have the numbers from the students in our class. So I'll just go to those first and I'll go to the method as well. Now this is the experiment that I give my students and come to think of it, I think this is one of the prescribed labs. So this could very easily occur in the exam. So seeing as no one else has seemed to have done this, this is probably um, mandatory watching actually for all IB students. Uh, and it, it is a little bit hard to understand, so let's try and see what's going on here. I think it's easier just to go to the actual method. And so what we have here is potassium iodate, uh, potassium iodide solution, look how strong that is. Uh, some starch solution, now starch plus iodine uh, makes the blue-black solution, and it's acidified. Okay, my wife is annoying me, and she's not letting me do this video, so I don't care. I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> go away. <laughs> So if you look at the method here, um, it says make to prepare your solution. Yeah, okay, fine, whatever. Um, pipette 20 mils of sample into a 250 ml conical flask, add some water, add some potassium iodide, which is a lot, uh, and the starch indicator. And so what you're going to get is this thing's been prepared, and you've got potassium iodide in there. Uh, and so what that really is, it's, it's aqueous. So that is not going to react with the starch uh, to go blue uh, because it's iodine, it's I2 plus starch uh, goes blue. So we need that to be turned into iodine and then it can go blue. All right, and so what's gonna happen is, as you'll see from the method down here, the potassium iodate is here and you add that potassium iodate and it does these funny nice little things here uh, and here it is, this is the important number two goes to six, it creates iodine and then that will go blue but uh, what happens is the iodine reacts with the ascorbic acid and goes back uh, so that's get oxidized and that gets reduced and it goes back again. So what you do is you keep on adding the iodate and that keeps on converting that to this uh, iodine and then the iodine get, keeps on getting converted down to uh, back to how it was. And then once you've used up all the ascorbic acid it can't do that anymore and the iodine will be left over and then it will react with the starch and go blue. Okay, so that's really fundamental to understand that. Go back and uh, listen to that again if you need to. So if you ha what you have here is you're going to keep on adding the potassium iodate to the point where all the iodine is used up by this ascorbic acid. And once it's stopped converting back to iodine, it'll then react with the starch and go blue. So I, I don't know what your numbers were, but my students actually got uh, 70 point oh oh plus or minus 0.05. Uh, centimeters cubed of potassium iodate and so that so what we now need to do is what does that mean so if we used first of all how many moles is that once we work out how many moles that is we'll do a conversion uh, from the moles down to the ascorbic acid and then we can work out uh, have to look back at these numbers here and work out so what's that mean so let's work out how many moles that is so first of all, we'll do number one is then working out the number of moles of potassium iodate. So number of moles equals concentration times volume. And so the concentration here is 0 0.002 times a volume of 0 0.07000 plus or minus 0.05. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the uncertainties on this. Uh, and so that's a percentage, so plus or minus 
that as a percentage. And so that I'll just go to the calculator for that. That's 1.4 by 10 to the minus four. And the error on that is 0.071%. Uh, I've taken a percentage error because I'm times in and dividing. Uh, otherwise, I just add the raw uncertainty if I, was, if I was plusing or minusing. So we know the number of moles of potassium iodate now. What does that mean as far as how much vitamin C that's reacted with? So here we have two moles goes to six moles, and that six moles goes to six moles. So two moles iodate, we can do that down to uh, the smallest whole numbers. One mole of iodate uh, is going to give, is going to react uh, to form three moles of iodine. That's going to react with the same number of ascorbic acid molecules. And so it's a one to three. So if you've used up one mole of this iodate, that uh, for every one mole of iodate that's been used, uh, being used up, it's reacted with three moles of vitamin C. So that's a really important number. So the next step is, is one mole of uh, iodate is to three moles vitamin C. And so we have this number here. So we have 1.4 by 10 to the minus four, plus or minus 0.071% um, is to X. I use the cross multiply method if you've watched any of my other videos. And so that times three equals one, therefore X equals, let me just go to the calculator. And so that comes out to 4.2 by 10 to the minus four, and we carry over the uncertainty plus or minus 0.071% of vitamin C. That's how much vitamin C that was reacted. And what we used here was uh, 20 centimeters. Okay, so it's going to be very difficult to get a 20 centimeter cubed sample. So what the students actually did is they got a mortar and pestle and they ground up a vitamin C tablet uh, into 250 mil um, volumetric flask. Uh, and that's where they got their, their 20 mil sample from. So how much was actually in the tablet? Well. Uh, the, the total volume was 300, 250 uh, centimeters cubed. And, and that was, this one here was only a sample of 20 centimeters cubed. So the, the total number of moles is gonna be a factor of that. So it's gotta be 4.2 by 10 to the minus four, carry that down somewhere. Uh, and it's uh, 250 over 20. Uh, and so that gives you a total number of moles volume, uh, moles of 0 0.00525 moles of vitamin C per tablet. Oh, man, I'll be out there like a triple tin later. Okay, so uh, lastly, we're going to compare this to the published value. So the actual per tablet, they said it was a thousand milligrams per tablet. And so we need to get to that value. And so we need to convert to mass. So the mass of the vitamin C tablet is number of moles times molar mass. Now I'm going to leave it to you to work out what the molar mass of the vitamin C tablet is. Uh, but I've, I've got it here, so I'm just going to type these, put these values in. So it's 0 .00552, uh, 525 moles times 176.124 grams per mole. So if you do that on the calculator, you should get 924.651 milligrams. All right, so that was 0 0.924 grams. Okay, now where is that um, percentage error come from? Let's just follow that one down. That's 0.071%. Uh, We've been timesing through all of this. We've still got a 0.71%. Okay, so let's finish up with our precision then. Uh, I'll just go to purple. Purple is okay. All right, um, and so that's our final answer. So I need to times that 924.651 by point. Uh, 007%. So 924.651 times uh, 7.14 by 10 to the minus 4, that ends up being. That there equals 0.66. All right, I want to get that to a, a single digit, so we're going to take that to 0.7. And so our error goes go to the smallest digit, which is here, and we'll round that one up as well. So the final answer is 924. 0.7 plus or minus 0.7 uh, milligrams of vitamin C. 
that's almost done. That's your first that's your first answer. All right, so that's our first answer, and that's our precision, which is pretty high. Uh, we then have to work out what the actual um, percent error is. Uh, and so the tablet, it was actually 1,000 milli uh, milligrams. So the percent error equals the, the theoretical minus the experimental over the theoretical. So it's 1,000 minus 924.7 over 1,000. And that's times by 100%. Uh, and so what you've got, and so that comes to 0 0.0753 um, times 100. Let's bring that back here. Uh, usually you just keep it to one sig fig. Uh, and so that gives you an 8% error. Okay, so I hope that's helpful. That's how you do the vitamin C ex uh, calculations and uh, for your IA as well. It also includes how to do the percent uh, uncertainty propagation and the percent error.